I want to start by saying to Jennifer and to Melissa um, how honored I am to have been a facilitator in this process with you. Uh, it was the hardest thing I think we've, I've ever done, but probably most rewarding sort of process to be involved in. And they were awesome folks to journey with. And so I've said that to lots of folks, and they said, what's it like to work with Jen? And it's actually crazy, but, uh, <laughs> but very, very rewarding. Um, also, I should say this, to the local uh, group of experts who helped us through that process, thank you, as well as the international folks that we reached out to on a regular basis, and many of you are in this room. Thank you for your ear, for your guidance, uh, for your expertise. We would not have been successful in this process without you, and uh, it means a lot. Now, that being said, with our Dalhousie Legal Counsel next to me, I should say all of my comments are my own. <laughs> I'm not speaking on behalf of the institution. So, it's just... No one wakes up, you know, in the morning as a child or grows up one day thinking, I think this is right, uh, that they're going to be a security guard. Um, there's, it sometimes happens in a variety of ways. You might, you might imagine um, one always wanting to be a cop and didn't quite make it, here's where they land. Or on the other side of things, retiring from law enforcement or military or something with a, a relevant <coughs> skill set, say, well, I can do that, and this is where they land. I am in neither <coughs> camp, actually. Um, I got here because I answered the phone one day when Jen called. And she said, and you probably, some of you probably had this kind of phone call, um, buddy, have I got a job for you? Uh, I now manage those calls through voicemail. But what, <laughs> what, what Jen was offering was an opportunity to work with a guy, Mike Burns, who's in the back of the room, who's director of security, about six years, Mike decided he was going to do something novel with the campus security department at Dalhousie. And Jen, in the way that she does so well, decides that I can link this person with that person, and it's going to be great. <laughs> Before dentistry, the biggest, um, I guess, scandal that we had in Dalhousie security was parking. <laughs> now, it seems like... It seems ridiculous until I tell you that about 25,000 people come to campus every day and we have 2,000 parking spots. And so what we've always been known for is parking enforcement and being very transactional. <coughs> and Mike said, listen, when you get here, I want to do something different. Let's shake it up a bit. If at the end of my term, if people say, wow, Mike and Jake have ran one hell of a parking program, we failed. <laughs> Let's turn it upside down. And so I guess that would be my first point about change. Change happens where you are, and it's really helpful when you run into leaders who make room, right? Leaders who have vision, who make room to, to spend their institutional capital to make a difference. Some of you in this room would, are those leaders, and so you'll make room for other people. And others in this room are just jealous. Because I, I found a really great opportunity <coughs> to do the work that we love. To, every, to a 17 or 18 year old who's an intoxicated student on a Friday night, I'm going to give you a little bit of insight. You've probably all been there. But one of the um, most offensive insults that they can figure to hurl at us, it doesn't actually bother me, but is, you're just a wannabe. A little bit more slurred speech, but that's essentially it. This gives us an awesome opportunity to think about what do we want to be. And so we turn this around. Uh, within our security service, we started thinking, what would it look like to be more restorative? What would it look like to transform? What do we want to be? Well, we want to be relational instead of transactional. Um, we'll always carry keys. There will always be doors locked. We will show up and unlock the door. There's not a lot of room for engagement in that scenario. <laughs> Cars will always park sideways when the lines go this way. We'll write a ticket. There's not a lot of opportunity for engagement. 
So what we needed to do, not already, let me live. So, <laughs> there's, I will ding you. Oh, you're yours. I know it's nice. Um, so what we wanted to do is we wanted to find opportunities where we could find more meaningful work to engage more deeply. To start building the capacity in our officers to not just be at the front end of taking a report and then passing it off, but what would it look like if as a security service we started to build capacity as facilitators? What if we hung in the game a little bit longer through the problem solving instead of just being a referral source and passing it along? We decided that we didn't want to just duplicate a uh, little police force. We, would do that, we, we wouldn't do that well, but we thought that if we could find a way to join the educational mandate of the institution, we would have more capacity to make a difference. First thing. I got two more. Okay. <laughs> Next thing we wanted to do, we wanted to uh, do truth finding or, or truth seeking with compassion. We decided that uh, we didn't have to investigate or, or seek truth by burning the house down. There are more than, uh, there's more ways to get to the, to the truth more than just what happened, but what matters most about what happened. The just the facts approach can burn the house down. So what, what we wanted to do is we wanted to participate in getting answers. And you'll, you'll recognize this. We one time went out. Um, I went out with a residence life manager. There was some problems in a residence. And they said, listen, we'll give $500 to the person who will come forward. And we went down the hallway and we we're getting, no, no, thank you, no, thank you. And one person said something to me that resonated, said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take $500 to turn in my friend. And I thought, actually, neither would I. Because, as it turns out, relationships are really important to students, too. And so when they think someone else is going to get in trouble, they're less likely to speak up. But when it sounds like change might happen, that, that systems may change, the institution may change, truth comes flowing out in ways that you can actually use that's meaningful. Okay, the last one. Good. <laughs> we wanted to invest. We wanted to invest in culture change on campus. Now, Mike will get nervous. I don't need money. I mean time and talent. 18 months ago, we joined a process uh, in the Faculty of Dentistry. We are still there, still working uh, restoratively in that, in that space. And oh, I did say that I'm speaking for myself. Anyone can write a report and run. Collaborators stay in the game. That's all. Awesome. Thank you.